thank you for tuning in to the Eclectic News Network. I'm Brian Blood. Today is Sunday, August 2nd. Uh, we are going to be going over a couple things in the news. Uh, today we're going to be talking about what's going on in the world. So to start off, um, we're going to go over COVID-19 news. And I think it's only good to have a man introduce COVID-19 news going forward. Here's a look. COVID-19! Wasn't that funny? But anyways, so yeah, this week Fauci testified to Congress with Representative uh, Jim Jordan, uh, basically with the exchange of, was there going to be any protests? Uh, protesting's okay, but not going to church okay. And Fauci basically said, I'm not going to answer that. I, I, I don't opine on anything, uh, which is basically his way of saying, shut up, I'm God. Uh, there's some protests that you wouldn't get arrested? You don't see any inconsistency there? I don't understand what you're asking me as a public health official to opine on who should get arrested or not. That's not my position. You could ask no, as advocate, much as you you've want, advocated for and certain businesses. You've advocated for certain businesses to be shut down. I'm, I'm just asking you on your position on the protest. I'm I mean, not, I haven't seen one. We've heard a lot about hair salons. I haven't seen one hairstylist who, between haircuts, goes out and attacks police or set something on fire. But we've seen all kinds of that stuff during protest, and we know the protest actually increased the spread of the virus. You've said that. I said crowds. I didn't say specifically. I didn't say protest do anything. So the protests don't increase the spread of the virus? I didn't say that. You're putting words in my mouth. No, I, I, want, I, would, I just want an answer to the question. Do the protest... I mean, it does make sense, doesn't it? You can go ahead and be in close proximity of thousands of people in the protest, and yet but you can't go to church church is not allowed, but protesting is fine as long as it's for Black Lives Matter. I mean, you have to understand that because this is about saving lives unless you're black. If you're black, shoot, uh, you know, your lives matter more, which is <laughs> stupid to begin with because we're all the same race. We're human. And this is just a divide and conquer strategy for the Federal Reserve just to buy up everything else that's not tied to the ground. Uh, because in a few years, they'll just own everything anyways. We've got a long way to go. Uh, but I'll talk about that later in the, the podcast. Um, but what's really concerning is this medical tyranny that's going on in this type of environment that we just believe science. Uh, we, we take a look at people's rights. Those don't matter. Wear a mask or you can't shop. Uh, wear goggles or you can't shop. You know. Uh, wear gloves or you can't shop or you can't sell or trade. Uh, this is the training wheels for the Mark of the Beast system. Uh, that'll be the medical ID next year or the year after. Or it'll be the uh, implantable nanotech vaccine that will literally have spikes on there that you can, little shards of glass that you can't see, that'll go into the body and you can't get rid of. And you're not going to be able to buy or sell without that. Uh, that's probably 2022, 2023. So I'm just giving you a timeline. But there was somebody who did warn about this a long time ago, almost 60, over 60 years ago, almost 60 years ago. He was a guy, I don't know if you remembered him, Dwight D. Eisenhower. He was the 34th president of the United States, uh, four-star general of the command of Allied Forces in World War II over Normandy. Uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Yet in holding scientific research and discovery in respect, as we should, we must also be alert to the equal and opposite danger that public policy could itself become the captive of a scientific, technological elite. Well, he knew it was 60 years ago almost, and that was on January 17th, 1961. That was part of his 23-minute farewell address to the nation that he was warning about the military industrial complex however he was warning to a deeper and more sinister motive of a technological scientific elite speaking of scientific technological elite and who's the head of that let's talk about bill gates bill gates of course this week was on cbs and was talking about the vaccines in the trials that were giving issues to 80 percent of the people 
And he said, well, you know, the FDA standard, well, you know, the FDA is uh, the, the gold standard of, uh, you know, um, of, of the test. And there's going to be some side effects. Why is it always these guys that, like, are the biggest dorks that control all of us? Play the clip. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation has committed more than $350 million for the development of diagnostics, therapeutics, and vaccines in the fight against the coronavirus. Earlier today, I asked Bill Gates what he makes of the results coming out from those early vaccine trials. We don't know if these vaccines will work. Uh, we don't know if they'll work to avoid deaths. We don't know if they'll work to avoid transmission. That's why we're working on so many first generation vaccines. How do we know if these vaccines are working? And you'd like it to be very safe in all the populations uh, that you indicate it for, no side effects. And then you'd like it to avoid the individual who gets the vaccine getting sick. Where are we in terms of a rapid diagnostic test? You've talked about this a lot. It would be a test that is like an in-home pregnancy test. Where are those tests? Uh, in the next uh, two to four months, some of those tests will get approved. Now, they won't be as accurate uh, as the PCR, which is a molecular test. And so over the next few months, we have to up PCR capacity. We have to get results back in 24 hours. We need both. And the lag times that we have today are completely unacceptable. It's making most much worthless. The president said just this weekend that the U.S. has the lowest mortality rate in the world. Is that factually correct? Not at all, not even close. I mean, uh, by almost every measure, uh, the U.S. is one of the worst. Why are we one of the worst? I mean, we actually had criteria for opening up that said you had to have cases declining, and we opened up with cases increasing. We have schools all in the midst of this decision about how to get kids safely back into the classroom or whether to learn totally online. How can we do it safely? The big challenge here is how to get the teachers and the staff in uh, and to avoid those kids being a source of infection as they go back into their households. This next academic year does hang in the balance on top of the learning deficits we have uh, coming out of last year. So, I, you know, I'd put that uh, after the deaths as the you know, next biggest cost. One of our viewers texted us this question. His name is Eric. He's actually from Washington State, where you are, and he asked, would you send your children to public school in this current situation? If the school is being careful, then yes. Uh, now, if they live in a multi-generational household, you know, where you have old people that they're exposed to, you have to look how hard would it be for you to reduce the you know grandparents exposure to those kids we do need to remember it's mostly the transmission into the older people that drives these you know really horrific uh deaths per day bill gates thank you so much for joining us and for all the information we appreciate it you bet thank you he wants in your body that's basically what he wants and he doesn't care they're going for broke and they don't care anymore. But anyway, so let's go on some more positive moves. How about the economy? How's it doing lately? Well, the second quarter GDP came out and it was better than expected. It was only down 32.9% in the second quarter year over year, which is actually great news. It should have been down like 70%, but because of the Fed can print trillions and trillions of dollars, well, they can do this. Here's a clip of that, and then we'll go over well, something here's else. Here's the GDP number. The first number that we have out on an annualized basis, GDP falls 32.9%. Gee, that's better than we anticipated. It was forecast. The consensus was for a negative 34.5% uh, drop. Now, I can tell you this is the worst number ever by magnitudes. The worst we ever saw in a quarter was negative 1.9%, and that was in 2008 and in 1949. So a really, really terrible number on GDP. We're waiting for the rest of the GDP breakdown yeah. to drop because it all comes across live. But we can tell you that personal consumption – Consumer spending down 34.6% on the month. The GDP price index down 1.8%. Core PCE down 1.1%. These are quarterly numbers, so the Fed doesn't pay as much attention to them. We'll get the income and spending numbers for June in uh, tomorrow morning, and that will tell us uh, much more about where inflation is. And 
Let's go back to 1996, when then-Fed Chairman Alan Greenspan talked to Jim Lehrer News Hour about the Federal Reserve's responsibility with the President. What is the uh, proper relationship, what should be the proper relationship between a chairman of the Fed and a President of the United States? Well, first of all, the Federal Reserve is an independent agency, and that means basically that uh, there is no ag other agency of government which can overrule actions that we take. So long as that is in place and there is no evidence that the administration or the Congress or anybody else is uh, requesting that we do things other than what we think is the appropriate thing, then what the relationships are uh, don't frankly matter. And uh, I've had uh, very good relationships with the presidents. They're above the law. They can do whatever they want. So what they're going to do is they're going to continue to pump this bubble as long as they can. And you're going to see gold and silver prices like they are going out now through the roof. Silver almost $25 an ounce. I think in July it was, what, $17 an ounce in the beginning of the month? That's quite an increase, 35% over a month. Silver's gone up to almost $2,000. It's $1,977 an ounce this week. That means that the dollar is firmly, and it's going down. I'm Brian Budd for the Eclectic News Network. And if you don't know what's going on, then I don't feel sorry for you. But as you can see here, there are some issues going on. And the national unrest that comes with it, especially these people. Final clip of the day of protesters in Austin going on Interstate 35. <laughs> going on with this country, I don't know. But I'm Brian Butt, and I'm the Eclectic News Network. Stay tuned for more updates next week.